All the way back in August of last year, I made a video talking about the woes of being a Yu-Gi-Oh player. And I'll admit, I worked hard on that video, especially for what I had known at the time, but it popped off a lot harder than I was expecting. So maybe I have a place in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. Or maybe it's just the thumbnail of the video because it was kind of funny. Either way, I wanted to visit the franchise that I love again so much and talk about an issue that's very apparent. But before that begins, please don't forget to hit the like button down below for us. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to see content like this in the future. And thank you all so much for watching. Like I alluded in my previous Yu-Gi-Oh! related video, there are a lot of ups and downs with trying to keep up with the meta in Yu-Gi-Oh! Take the current top deck right now, or at least from what I found. Snake Eyes and Fire King. Now, for the most part, these cards aren't that expensive, ranging from around $6 to $8 for some of the most common cards for the deck. But one card in particular, Bonfire, retails right now for on the low end $60 and around $110 to $120 on the high end, depending on where you buy it from. And the deck runs three copies of this card. I haven't even looked at the extra deck for this deck because I already know it's going to be ludicrously expensive so we'll just forego it altogether. But the pricing of the game is not the subject I wanted to talk about today. Today, I wanted to talk about the idea of power creep, how it's affected the game, and what I think could possibly be done to combat it. Power creep is essentially a situation in a game where newer content or features make older ones obsolete or irrelevant for the most part, which usually results in a pretty large imbalance in the game. Let's take a look at one of the other franchises I love dearly as an example, Pokemon. Now, when I mention Pokemon moves and abilities, maybe you'll think of things like Psychic, Thunderbolt, or Fire Blast for the moves, and for abilities maybe you'll think of things like Huge Power or Drizzle. And alone, these moves and abilities are great, even phenomenal on the right Pokemon. But let's take a look at some of the abilities and moves we have for some of the recent Pokemon as a comparison. For moves, we have things like Urshifu Surging Strikes, which hits multiple times and guarantees crit on each hit, effectively getting rid of any plan for a Focus Sash, Sturdy, or Substitute combo. Plus, its ability Unseen Fist allows contact moves, i.e. its signature move, to bypass Protect altogether. Or how about abilities? Some of the most recent Pokemon introduced to us in Scarlet and Violet are the Vessels of Ruin. These Pokemon all have an ability that reduces the stat of all other Pokemon on the field by 25%. For example, Ting Lu reduces all other Pokemon's special attack, which just lends to the Pokemon living even longer than it already needs to. And I know what you're thinking, well yeah, that's a legendary Pokemon. Of course its abilities are going to be broken. And I understand where you're coming from with that line of thinking, but let's not forget the multitude of legendary Pokemon that have the ability Pressure but I digress. Now, that's all a very long-winded way of saying that power creep is definitely a problem that's affected Yu-Gi-Oh! pretty massively. And this is very evident without having to look too far for examples. Original Yu-Gi-Oh! all the way up to around Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds was decently balanced in their own rights. OG Yu-Gi-Oh! was very slow and focused on the main deck mostly, so most duels were actually a lot of back and forth. GX showed a bigger focus on the extra deck, but since fusion monsters were the only thing that the extra deck had at the time, everyone was just rocking a guaranteed polymerization or variant of it in their deck, and usually was relegated to either one or two big boss monsters. 5D saw the game starting to pick up speed with the introduction of synchro monsters, as they were similar to fusion monsters since they often needed specific material, although not always, but synchro monsters didn't have to rely on the need of a specific spell card to summon them like Palmerization or a Ritual Spell. And this, in my opinion, is where things slowly start to snowball. Monsters like Stardust Dragon were pretty game-defining in their time since all it took were two monsters whose levels equaled eight and one had to be a tuner. But you still had to rely on getting a tuner. So at this point, Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't quite as fast as what we know today. But then came Xyz Monsters. Without going into too much detail of how every card type impacted the state of the game, Xyz Monster shook everything up massively because all it took was usually two monsters of the same level 
to make the extra deck monster, which was much easier to facilitate rather than relying on getting a polymerization or getting a tuner monster. Being able to use any two level 4 monsters to bring out Utopia to then evolve it into its variant that can have 10,000 attack is pretty crazy. And the speed doesn't stop there, Konami even took the idea a step further with the creation of Link monsters, which not only take generic material like Xyz monsters, but also affect the field around them. This insane shift in power has left the main deck to be, for the most part, nothing more than a vehicle to summon the large boss monsters from the extra deck out onto the field. And obviously big boss monsters are the aim of the game, but with crazy effects that lock opponents out from being able to even play the game, stopping opponents from summoning anything, or just completely wiping somebody's field in one turn, are we even calling it dueling anymore? I don't know about you, but to me the magic of Yu-Gi-Oh! and other card games like it is the back and forth of it all. Sure, don't get me wrong, it can be fun to completely overpower an opponent and show complete dominance over them. But if you win 20 duels in a row and every duel is over by th turn 3 or 4, what's the point anymore? So once again, we're left with the question of, what do we do? There are always going to be new decks and cards that come out that keep overshadowing their predecessors and Konami is clearly not out of ideas yet. Ban lists are helpful if you want to follow them, but some cards never come off the ban list because of how they affect the game, and some lose a lot of their power due to being partially banned. In my previous video, I mentioned putting every card at 1, which I've now learned is called Commander Format, and while I do still stand by a lot of the points I made, I do recognize that putting every card at 1 probably wouldn't be that healthy for the game. Although admittedly, I also do think that some people were being a very overdramatic about the state of the game in the comment section of that video. Instead, the only thing I could think of that could potentially smooth the power creep out a bit and make older decks more relevant again would be to limit the amount of times you can special summon. I mean, think about it. At the end of the day, most decks that become tier 0 are because they have good main deck monsters that constantly recycle and summon other main deck monsters from the deck to then be used to bring out boss monsters from the extra deck. If special summoning is limited, it makes duelists have to consider what they are summoning and where from a lot more thoroughly, and also ensures that it's a lot harder to bring out multiple boss monsters in the same turn at the beginning of the duel. Doing this could also give decks that are a bit slower by nature a bit of a chance to shine. If some of these older decks aren't utilizing as many special summons or the extra deck as much as newer decks, then limiting the amount of special summons per turn could definitely help level the playing field a bit for some of these older cards. And to the exact number, I'm not sure. I think 5 would probably be a good number to limit it to. Essentially, one summon per main monster zone per turn. Now, do I think this would solve every problem the game has? Obviously not. As long as there are more cards coming at us from across the horizon, there will always be more issues and puzzles for us as fans to have to deal with. But I do think that limiting the amount of special summons would stop a ton of insane loops from happening that ends up in a board lock of 6 or 7 cards with 6 or 7 negates. Thank you all so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to leave a like on the video letting me know that you did enjoy it. Don't forget to leave a comment down in the comment section below letting me know what your favorite part of the video was, what you agree or disagree with, and what you may want to see in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.